In 1944, a 10-year-old boy by the name of Newton Anderson was playing in his basement, smashing lumps of coal with a mallet, when he made an amazing discovery. The coal that he was playing with had been mined very near to where he lived in Upshur County, West Virginia, and is largely accepted to be around 300 million years old. Imagine then Newton's and subsequently his parents' surprise when he presented to them this small bell complete with strange winged figure and its possibly very ancient clapper, later found to be made of iron. Although there are many people who now insist that the dating of the coal must be incorrect, this little bell could also be a long lost relic, lost within woodland, that over the eons becomes perfectly preserved within the eventual coal seam, lost by an advanced civilization which once inhabited Earth. The bell is considered an antediluvian artifact or an object of pre-flood origins by the Institute for Creation Research, who had the bell submitted for laboratory testing at the University of Oklahoma. Whilst there, a nuclear activation analysis revealed that the bell contained an unusual mix of metals, a mix of metals not uncommon to Earth but rather unusual for our current civilization to have decided to have manufactured it with, further supporting its authenticity as a very ancient relic. Later on in his life, Newton Anderson spent a great deal of time researching the figure atop the bell. He discovered similarities to the Babylonian southwest wind demon called Pazuzu. The demon typically is shown with a prominent headpiece like the bell figure. The Hindu deity Garuda is sometimes depicted on top of bells, as is the Egyptian Isis. The kneeling posture with hands clasped is also quite like Garuda representations and because of this, some have argued that it must be an Indian Ganta bell. However, these similar and often confusing arguments over very similar deities could be seen as a consequence of cataclysm. Past civilization and the mythologies briefly retained and all recorded at a time before such belief systems became too clouded with other outside influences. Another rare artifact is this strange handle, also found in coal and fortunately photographed before it vanished forever totally petrified and reportedly appeared to have virtually turned to coal. According to those who briefly investigated it, the handle appeared as well made as any modern handle. What do you think regarding these strange objects? Can coal form and objects petrify faster than we have ever witnessed? Or are these relics indeed millions of years old? Thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. The Terracotta Army undoubtedly one of the most remarkable archaeological discoveries of modern times. It is a stone army that so far consists of over 8,000 individually detailed warriors, 700 uniquely carved horses, along with 130 chariots. What makes this feat, and indeed the ancient site, so astonishing, apart from the clear, incredible precision, delicacy, and artistic prowess of their creators, is the incredibly advanced technologies found to litter the army and the possible tomb. A supposed tomb with what we suspect is a mystery inhabitant, which, according to academia, this army was created to guard and carry over with into the afterlife. It is claimed that it is the burial of the first ever emperor of China, known as Qin Shi Huang. And although academia has concluded that these ancient soldiers were created during this well-studied, more modern emperor's reign, we feel, due to the numerous mysterious factors attached to these miraculous artworks, in which we are about to convey, strongly suggests that not only was this accomplishment far out of the reach of these well-studied recent ancestors, but are indicative of lost civilization which we have on our channel been searching so long to unearth and lay eyes upon. Firstly, the warriors themselves were all created to represent an individual, painted with incredibly precise lifelike colors, which included a pigment known as Han Purple. A pigment so advanced, chemists were unable to replicate it until 1992. After it was successfully recreated, it was discovered that it eliminates an entire visual dimension, making waves in two dimensions. What's more, most intriguing is the fact that although academia claims each soldier was a precise recreation of an individual subject, each warrior is around 2 meters tall. 
a height factor we have long postulated was a common reality, far back within antiquity. The metallurgy is another smoking gun. Swords unearthed in the pits were, regardless of their tremendous age, still sharp, showing no signs of rust and still appearing new and shiny. All masterfully crafted, and according to tests of their surfaces, underwent an oxidation treatment with chromic salts. However, based on historical literature, another advanced technology which was not invented by modern man until 1937. Furthermore, supporting our posit that these warriors are not dated from an era 2000 years ago, but used as this culture's inspiration, is the fact that regardless of the incredible discovery, no excavation of the purported tomb at the site, claimed by academia as the actual purpose for the incredible array of stone warriors, the Chinese government blocks all attempts to investigate the tomb. We feel this is likely due to the incredibly strong evidence of advanced technologies already publicly shared. Discovered at the entrance to this mysterious lair, like a scene from Indiana Jones, is booby trap mechanisms involving advanced crossbows, loaded with venom-tipped arrows, still in situ within the walls of the entrance, torque bows which were clearly created by a far more advanced people than we are currently being led to believe. According to academia, who has put forth a claim, we feel, is an attempt to impress and stifle further inquisition, these masterfully carved warriors were, apparently, created by over 700,000 men over a period of more than 20 years. Yet, as any artistically talented person will tell you, especially a sculptor, these warriors were not created by the hands of untrained slaves who were ordered to chisel them out from the notoriously fragile terracotta. These warriors were undoubtedly created by individuals of tremendous talent and ability. If one requires further supportive evidence for this obvious hypothesis, a second terracotta army found within Western Han is far more realistic to the era, crudely created, and of a tiny scale, we feel, these warriors are clear evidence of the actual capabilities of this dynasty's inhabitants, and also, we feel, a clear indication that these initial emperors had indeed discovered the original life-size warriors at some point within antiquity, undoubtedly attempting to copy their advanced technologies, kickstarting their success in combat, especially armoring techniques, thus giving academia convenient factors from these recent ancestors to support their attempts to link and claim these remarkable statues as modern creations. This, regardless of the astonishing technological prowess, which these 10,000 strong artistic masterpieces were drenched in. Deciding to ignore such controversial facts in favor of conclusive assumption, which once gained them extensive public faith in their ongoing, severe, selective research syndrome. Before Chinese censorship of the site had become a complete quarantine, modern archaeologists had intriguingly found tremendous amounts of mercury a difficult element to have acquired in mass 2,000 years ago within the soil surrounding the mausoleum. A chemical also found beneath Teotihuacan, which we feel further supports our suspicions that this site, along with these incredible warriors, is far older and incredibly more advanced than currently attested, and is actually indicative of lost technology left by a now lost civilization. Who actually created the terracotta warriors? Who do they actually depict? Why are they so tall? Who built the complex underground lair, now conveniently shut off, never publicly explored, left triggered with advanced booby trapping? What is within? What are these booby traps protecting? It is a sight we find incredibly compelling.